Hello, hello everyone. My name is Conrad on behalf of Camera Stuff. Thank you for joining tonight. Um, so tonight we are going to review a couple of new world RGB lighting panels. Uh, but before we get into that, I'm just going to allow the audience to bolt a little bit. Um, in the meantime, if you are watching, if you have joined already, tell me where you're from in the comment section. Introduce yourself. I want to know who I'm talking to. But as mentioned, we're going to review a couple of the RGB um, uh, panels from newer, so specifically the 660 Pro RGB and the RGB 168. We'll get into that in a wee moment. As I said, we're just building a bit of an audience first, then we can get started. Now, I did promise um, last week that I'm going to review the Go, um, not the Godox, but the newer CB60. Um, that is a RGB monolight LED. So it has the bones mount, so you can mount soft boxes and uh, beauty dishes, snooze, optical snooze onto it. But unfortunately, we don't have any demo units for me to test out. So for the time being, we're going to do the RGB panels instead. So hopefully next week or a couple of weeks time, I can do a review of that CB60 instead. All right, so I think we can get started. So I'm just going to get my slideshow ready. Did, 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 did it. All right, so it's all engines go. Okay, so we're going to review these guys specifically. So this is the RGB 660 Pro. Okay, that is what that looks like. Let me go back, see the control panel and such. Sorry, that's making noise. And we're gonna test this guy as well. You know, it's quite big, so it's almost not fitting into the frame. But yeah, this is the RGB 168. down da, 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 da. all right so the newer rgb 168 that's on the left hand side of the newer 660 pro rgb so you can see the couple of them they're in action and also the back of the units so this specifically is the newer rgb 168 so it's the larger one so you can see a front view, a back view, and a side view of what this panel looks like. And here, the newer 660 Pro RGB unit. All right, so that is what these lights look like. So let's dive into the wonderful world of RGB lighting uh, from newer. So today, as I said, we're going to discuss the 660 Pro and the RGB 16i, 168, should I say. But before we get into the fun stuff, let's just get some of the boring stuff out of the way first. All right, so first up, the 660 RGB Pro with a powerful 50 watt output. Uh, this LED is perfect for modest productions and studios. Um, also, you won't be making any Hollywood blockbusters with this LED specifically. Um, they are perfect and sufficient for broadcasting, YouTube videos, live videos, Zoom meetings. Uh, in terms of photography, you can do portraits, product photography, still life, and a whole lot more with these LEDs. So both these lights provide plenty of illumination um, and then some for most modest work. Now something to remember is that these um, RGB units, because they are RGB, they're not as bright as single color LEDs. Now the reason why is because RGB panels are composed of multiple individual um, LEDs, uh, red ones, green ones, and blue ones, and they create the entire color spectrum, including white light as well. So you don't have as much room for all of these different colors. Um, and thus, they will be less bright as opposed to an LED panel that has a lot of room for only single colored um, LED diodes. So the brightness of each color on an RGB panel uh, will vary, um, which can impact the overall brightness of the light itself. For example, a green LED may not be as bright as the red ones or the blue ones, etc. So choosing uh, different colors may impact the overall brightness as well. A white light as an LED, um, sorry, a white LED as an example, only emits one color of light. And thus, um, you don't need to mix different LED beads whatsoever. So you have a lot more room on a circuit board to uh, mount all of these LED beads, thus you'll get more brightness out of single colored LED panels. All right, so to continue on, um, a nifty feature that both of these um, LEDs share is the ability to communicate with your smartphone. So these LEDs, and it's becoming a bit of a modern trend, they don't include remotes as such. But if you download the newer app, um, just go to your app store, search for newer, it's easy to find and easy to download. Um, then you can use your smartphone as a remote to control um, 
both of these lights respectively. Respectfully, should I say. All right, so as mentioned, you can download the newer app and you can use that as a remote for both of these lights. And I'll show you in a little bit what that is going to look like. In addition to their RGB capabilities, both these units have standard bicolor modes in addition to special effects modes as well. So specifically with the 660 Pro, uh, the color temperature ranges from 3,200 Kelvin to 5,600 Kelvin. Whereas with the RGB 168, that being the larger unit, that has an impressive range of 2,500 Kelvin going up to 8,200 Kelvin. Now, as mentioned, they both have special effects modes as well, but I'll show you what that looks like in a little bit. All right, so both these units can use uh, two MPF batteries. So that's obviously a game changer when it comes to on-location work, um, especially during load shedding and such. So you have the option of AC power, that being electricity from a wall outlet, or you can use batteries. Now, unfortunately, the batteries are not included, um, but you can purchase the map camera stuff as well. So just to reiterate, we have the option of AC power or battery power. All right, now some of the differences between the newer 660 and the RGB 168, um, most noticeably, will be that of the barn doors. So the barn doors will just help you to guide light and to restrict light spillage in whichever direction. So you can adjust the little doors to prevent light spillage or to open light in whichever direction. I also find that the 660 has a clever bracket as well. So it's a tilting yoke bracket that allows you to tilt the um, RGB in multiple um, angles. So it just grants you a bit more maneuverability as far as the light is concerned. The RGB 660 also has a removable diffuser. So you can remove the diffuser if you want more light, but if you want softer light, you can just slide in that diffuser again. Okay, so that is what the um, multi-adaptable bracket looks like. So you can mount it in a traditional way. Or you can mount the bracket vertically, but that will just give you a bit more freedom as far as the um, tilting of the LED itself is concerned. All right, so let's talk about the newer RGB 168, that being the larger unit. All right, so despite this um, unit having a, ra um, a higher rated power output, so it's 50 watts versus 60 watts, uh, the RGB 168 is about equally as bright as the 660. The reason why is because it has a built-in diffuser, and that diffuser is also quite dense, so it does restrict a lot of light, um, or should I say a minimal amount of light, but it does give you a nice soft light, a flattering light that is evenly diffused. Plus, it also grants you a big illumination angle. Uh, that, to explain that, it just grants you a wider dispersion of light as opposed to a more so uh, concentrated beam of light. So just like the 660, you can use it with a couple of batteries, um, also not included. Um, has a tilting bracket, not as advanced as the 660, mind you. But overall, this is a larger unit, which will give you softer light, also evenly diffused um, spread of light as well. The design is ultra thin. So in terms of travel and storage, this unit is very easy to travel with. All right, so I did mention that the 660, sorry, the RGB 168, the large unit, is softer as opposed to, let's say, a Godox SL60. So you can see the shadow created by the smartphone and uh, the light stand on the backdrop. With the Godox SL60, that is undiffused, so no modifier attached whatsoever. You can see with a bare light how harsh that shadow is with the Godox SL60. Whereas with the newer 168, it completely softens and diffuse, diffuses the shadow uh, just to give you a bit more of a softer overall quality of light. Now, in comparison to the other unit, the newer 168 versus the 660, you can see the 660 does diffuse the shadows ever so slightly, but not as um, not as much as the 168. So just to reiterate, that 168 for larger unit, it has the built-in diffuser, so it will give you a softer light, the illumination angle, is also much wider. So you can see here on the left-hand side how concentrated that beam of light is, whereas on the right-hand side with the 168, it just provides a wider beam, a wider illumination of light. All right, so in close proximity to the light, you have a wider spread of light that can be useful in multiple situations. So if you want to illuminate larger areas or if you want to illuminate an entire backdrop, but you can't really push the light too far away, 
having a light with a very wide illumination angle can be incredibly useful for that. As opposed to the 660 um, on the left-hand side, as you can see, that light is a little bit more so concentrated. It has a heavier center of light. All right, so I think this is the magic of these two newer lights, and um, they can be used with a smartphone. So as mentioned, you can download that app. It's easy to find, easy to download, and easy to use as well. So after downloading the app, um, you just need to add these individual lights that you're using. Um, so it will do a search via the Bluetooth um, connection. And from there, you can use your smartphone as a remote. So I'm going to show you what I kind of cooked up in my own studio here. All right, so just to explain what I'm doing here, so on the left-hand side, that was my smartphone. So I did a screen grab of my smartphone and I just superimposed that onto this video. On the right-hand side, I have my trusty mannequin head that I used. In this setup, I have the RGB 660 as my key light, so that's positioned just slightly out of frame on the left-hand side. And as a backdrop light, I used the larger um, 168 just to illuminate the backdrop, but you'll see that in a moment. All right, so just by a touch of a finger, you can adjust these settings of these individual lighting. So you can increase the brightness as an example. Add a color temperature. You have access to that as well. With the 660, that goes from 3,200 Kelvin up to 5,600 Kelvin. Okay, now I'm gonna select the RGB 168. That's the light on the backdrop. So I can steadily illuminate the backdrop and I'll have a live preview as to what that's going to look like. So again, just by using the smartphone, the smartphone app, should I say, you can adjust the brightness and the color temperature. But obviously, if this being RGB lighting, you want to access some of the colors. So you have a nifty little color wheel there that you can just touch and you can find the specific color that you want, or you can use the side, um, the side scrollers just to adjust the type of hue that you want, but in addition, you can adjust the brightness and the saturation of the color. So here I'm independently adjusting the backdrop light, that being the RGB 168. And to go back to the 660, now I can adjust the color of my key light as well. All right, so you have access to all of the controls via the smartphone. And you can also see the RGB units here in action. So you can touch that colored wheel to find the specific brightness, hue, and saturation that you want. All right, so as a warning, if you are sensitive to flashes, um, probably put down <laughs> the phone that you're using or switch off the monitor. Now, so we're going to see plenty of flashing now. So as mentioned, the RGB units have special effects modes. So here specifically, I'm using the cop car mode, which can also use ambulance lighting as well as a, and also fire fighting lights as well. So here independently switching between the backdrop light and the front light, that being my key light. So on the front light, I have candle light mode. And here on the background, again, I have candle light mode activated as well. So a great bit of a, a campfire setting using these RGB lighting. Now, each of these um, special effects modes have their own independent settings as well. So you can adjust the speed, the color temperature, the brightness. Um, certain special effects will have additional settings. For example, the candlelight mode will have sparks, so you can adjust the amount of quote-unquote sparks that you want. But yeah, you have these uh, RGB cycle modes and party modes in addition to the vast variety of other special effects modes as well. Yeah, so all of this can be done directly from your smartphone or via the control panel of each of these LEDs. But it's just so much easier to use that smartphone um, app. All right, I tried a different arrangement in my studio. So here, quite similar. Instead, the RGB 168 was placed underneath a model uh, just to provide a bit of fill-in light from the bottom up. So again, the 660 uses my key lights. So then I'm adjusting the brightness. 
And here from the bottom, I'm just adding a bit of fill in light. But obviously being RGB lighting, we can play around with colors as well. So if you want to create some funky portraits or uh, funky environments for your model, um, you know, if you have plenty of uh, opportunities here, plenty of creative options as to how you want to yeah, be a little bit more funky as opposed to just using white light in itself. Okay, so if you're just joining us, what I'm showing you here is the capabilities of the smartphone app. So you can control the RGB panels directly from your smartphone plus using your smartphone as a remote. And you have access to all of the controls. So you can adjust for brightness, for hue, uh, for saturation of the colors. You have access to the special effects modes as well. But if you want to use only white light, that's available too. So that's the CCT mode uh, that allows you to adjust the color temperature. All right, so plenty of fun to be had. So just in the space of what, three minutes, I've gone through so many different you know, lighting, uh, creative ways of lighting my model. All right, so I have more, sorry, tongue twister. I have some more videos to show you, but in the meantime, if you have questions to ask, please do drop them in the comment section. This is why we're doing the live broadcast so that we can interact with you guys. And see, we have a nice crowd. So um, yeah, even if you don't have a question to ask, yeah, just introduce yourself. Tell me where you're from. I want to know who I'm talking to. Okay, just to show you what those setups look like. So on the left-hand side, that was the second video. So if your RGB 168 placed below the um, jawline of the model, just to create a bit of fill-in light from the bottom up, uh, the 660 used as my key light, um, just off center to the left-hand side. Now on the first video that you saw, that was just me using the RGB 168 as a backdrop light. Again, with the 660 used as my key light, just position off center. All right, so what I'm going to do now is show you all of these special effects modes. So it's going to pop that on screen. All right, so quite a few to talk about. Again, as a reminder, if you're sensitive to flashes, um, probably switch off the phone or the video. Um, there's going to be plenty of flashing in the next segment. All right, so first we have lightning mode. So as mentioned, you can adjust the individual settings of all of these um, special effects modes. You can adjust the color temperature and the speed of the flashing of the lightning itself. All right, so the second is papa, sorry, paparazzi mode, paparazzi flashes, so that to simulate the flashes from um, speed lights. Again, you can adjust the color temperature and the speed the rate of fire of these quote unquote speed lights. So next is a defective light bulb. It's often used in horror movies. So you'll just see a vague flickering of the light and the light will just switch off every now and then. Okay, that is your defective bulb mode. So next one is explosion. I think it makes sense to adjust the color temperature to orange, uh, just to simulate a big old explosion in the foreground or background. So some of these special effects modes will just look a bit more authentic depending on the angle and position of the light itself. For example, with fire um, fireworks, we'll see that in a moment. Let's pause here. So for example, with fireworks, obviously you want to position the light quite far above the eye line of your model and aimed down. So here is welding, electric welding. So this one is called CCT flash. So it flashes through the various color temperatures. So 
So it just switches on and off, basically. I don't know what you would use this for, but it is a mode that is available. So in a specific color temperature, the light will just flash on and off. And you have the U flash mode available. So that's similar to the previous mode, but it's just you can choose a specific color with it. So the next one is color temperature pulse mode. So choosing a specific color temperature, the light will just pulse on and off. So the next one is the hue pulse. So you can select a specific color and the light will just pulse on and off. So it will fade in and fade out. So the next one is a favorite. It's a cop car mode. Now you can choose red lights only, you can choose blue lights only, you can choose a combination of blue and red, or a combination of white and blue, or all of the colors. By all of the colors, I mean red, white, and blue. And obviously you can adjust the speed of the flickering as well. So the next one is candlelight mode. So you have two settings as far as your brightness is concerned. The lowest output versus the brightness, the brightest output. And again, you can adjust the color temperature, but I suspect under candlelight, it makes sense to use a lower temperature value. And also the speed of the amount of quote unquote sparks that you want to add. So the sparks, that's just the fancy you know, flickering of the light every now and then. So here we have the RGB cycle mode or hue cycle mode. So here under this setting, you're going to go through all of the colors available. And you can select a range as well. So if you only want the blues, for example, or only the magentas, you can select a finer range. But if you want all of the colors, you can just open up the entire color spectrum. And obviously you can adjust the speed as well. So we have a color temperature loop as well. So this is a color intermittent loop. Sorry, just the pause on that. So the previous one is the intermittent loop. So it's gonna not pulse on and off. It's gonna go to its full maximum brightness and it will switch back to off again. So again, if you have a purposeful that in mind, I don't know what you'd use that for, but it is available just in case. So this is TV screen mode. So it's going to give the appearance that you're going through different channels or different scenes on a TV monitor. It's going to switch on and off. It will vary in brightness and in color. This will be your fireworks mode. So it's going to simulate fireworks in the distance. So I think this will make more sense given a better position of the light. So obviously you want to place it very far up high, above eye level, and aim directly down at your subject. All right, so all those fancy special effects modes. Um, yeah, so quite a few useful ones. Some I would think are a little bit more niche. But yeah, certainly if you want to create a um, a funky environment, you know, be it a candlelight or campfire mode setting, you can use the campfire or candlelight mode. If you want to simulate fireworks, you can do that. If you want cop car um, lights in the background or at a distance, you can do that as well, et cetera, et cetera. So plenty of FX modes available just to just for you to be a little more creative with your um, with your work. Okay. So FX modes are available in addition to the CCT mode, that's just pure white mode, where you can adjust the color temperature left and right, and obviously the RGB modes as well. Now, so plenty of uh, creative options for you to use for your own personal work. Okay, don't know if there's something else that I missed, but job, that's basically the nitty gritty of it. Okay, so what I want to show you now is the comparative um, light outputs of each of these units, plus the, with the addition of the Godox SL60. So I downloaded a app on my phone that is a light meter, and it displays the brightness in a lux value. Now, just take this with a pinch of salt. You know, your smartphone reader may not be that accurate um, 
apparently if you have a screen protector on your phone it's going to skew the results as well yeah so this was just used to compare the light output of these individual lights so as you can see the newer 660 versus the 168 uh, more or less the same brightness this was with a light position one meter um, away from the reader itself now I switched on a Godox SL60 that at maximum brightness is about you know twice as powerful as that of any of these lights Okay, so that is a consideration. So if you want to use, sorry, lost my chain of thought here. Yeah, so if you want to use a Godox SL60, that is a pure white light, obviously you can use soft boxes and uh, snoots and beauty dishes with it. But what if you want to use a gel with it? What are the comparisons then? All right, so you can see the Godox SL60 provides nearly as much light as a newer 660. So here with the Godox SL60, I used a reflector dish with a red gel. And on the left-hand side, that was the newer 660 um, that is in its red hue mode. So as you can see with the lux values, more or less the same. But it's just something to consider here. If you're gonna put a gel on a reflector dish with that Godox SL60, it's gonna create a far more um, focused illumination of light. So you can see on the left-hand side that focus beam as opposed to the newer 168, which provides a much bigger uh, dispersion of light. So it's just something to consider. But here we can see more examples. On the left-hand side, newer 660 with a blue hue. On the right-hand side, that's a Godox SL60 with reflected dish and a blue gel. Again, more or less the same amount of light. Now, this was interesting to me. So I tried the green. Uh, so a normal amount of light with a newer 660, but on the right-hand side, a massive loss of light. So I think the green gel is just far more denser as opposed to the other gels. So you're going to limit the amount of light passing through that gel, which is the case among gels. So certain gels are denser than others. So certain gels pass through more light as opposed to other gels. Yeah, so the denser the gel itself, the less light is going to pass through it. And I think that is exactly what happened here. All right, so this is a consideration. Do you buy, let's get my face back. Uh, do you buy an RGB light or do you buy a cheaper, something like a Godox SL60 and just attach gels to it? Well, that's up to you, right? Um, I think it's a horses for courses thing. The RG, sorry, the RGB lights will just give you far more options, far more convenient to use, especially with the case of the 168 straight out of the box that will just give you a nice soft light. Obviously with the SL60, you can attach a soft box to soften the light but then you need to stick the gel on the inside using gaffer tape or whatever tape is available. So yes, it is an option using SL60 with gels, but you're not going to have all of the colors, right? So the RGB is just far more convenient, far easier to use in terms of picking a specific color. So yeah, I think it's up to you. Personally, I would definitely get a bright white light. And if I want to change the color, definitely I'll add a gel to it. Now, these RGB lights are incredibly useful as supplementary lights. So if you want to illuminate a backdrop or use it as a kicker light or as a room light, if you want to add a splash of color here and there, these RGB units can be used for that. So very funky to use, very fun to use. Um, not very bright, as I mentioned at the beginning. For that, you can use a dedicated white light. But as supplementary lights, to complement your setup, these RGB units are incredibly fun to use. All right, so if you're still watching, see we still have... Quite a few people watching so if you have questions to ask please do drop them in the comment section i don't want to be here talking to myself but yeah i think that's pretty much the end of today's lesson so hopefully you learned a bit about these rgb units and far as their usefulness is concerned in terms of brightness to give you a bit of an indication um i did have a settings with one of these not this one All right, so you can see in the right-hand corner there, uh, with the LED position one meter from our subject, the settings that I needed to use was a 60th shutter speed, ISO 400, and an aperture of f4. So at this point, I could have um, opened up my aperture to 1.8 if I wanted to choose a lower ISO. Um, but yeah, as far as practical settings are concerned, you can play around here. But yeah, this is the thing about using constant lights. Um, Chances are you're going to need to use a big ISO just to allow more light into your camera. 
So here, um, I had to use ISO 400. Possibly, you're going to need to use ISO 800 or 1600, depending on your other settings. Yeah, so I'm not making any secrets here. These lights are not as bright as flashes. Obviously not. A flash may be anything between 16 to 64 times brighter than most constant lights. But yeah, the beauty of constant lights, obviously you have these funky modes available. Uh, you get the WYSIWYG preview, WYSIWYG standing for what you see is what you get. Yeah, so constant lights are useful in their own respects. But yeah, not as bright as a flash. So if you're going to use it for photography, I'm probably going to need to compromise on a couple of settings here and there. Specifically, perhaps ISO. I'm going to need to use a big ISO than what you may be used to. Okay, so that was with a light position, one meter from the subject. Okay. Do -do 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 -do. Get my face back. All right, so I think that was it. Um, unless you have any questions to ask in the comment section, which I would welcome, but seemingly we don't have any. Yeah, so as I like to say, if I don't have any questions, that means I did a good job with my lecture. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. You tell me. So I think that's going to be the end of our little discussion. So um, yeah, hopefully you learned a lot about these slides in terms of the usefulness, what you may want to use it for. Um, something I can show you in the meantime, before I sign off as to where to find these on the website. Alrighty. All right, so, so we have our entire newer category here, which we are quite excited about. So we are stocking a vast variety of newer, and in the future, we are going to expand our range as well. But uh, you'll find the RGB lights in that category, specifically the 168, that is 4,449, which I think is a good uh, it's good value for money for what you get. Um, we also have a 660 available in a kit. So two of these lights, plus stands, plus a couple of bags, uh, 7,010 Rand at the time of this video. But if you want to buy the individual unit, that is 3,289. Okay, so we have these available on the website. Um, you can shop online or visit us obviously, at our shop in Der Gauri, Johannesburg. All right, so our first comment, thanks. I just bought the CB60. Um, yeah, I'm quite excited about the CB60 as well myself. I'm just unfortunate I didn't have a demo unit for tonight. But yeah, I haven't played with it, but this gave me some creative creations in mind. Yeah, so it's so many options to play with. Um, I haven't even uncovered a lot of it, right? Um, but yeah. Plenty of FX modes, RGB modes. You can use these lights in different uh, different setups, different angles, different positions. You can modify them you know, using scrims or uh, flags, etc., to create you know very unique uh, lighting setups. But yeah, I'm very excited about these RGB panels. I'm going to use them myself in the future, and I hope you're excited as well. So, um, yeah, I think that's going to be it from our side. So hopefully you did enjoy this video. Um, but yeah, that's going to be me, Conrad, signing off. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, yeah, until next time, just check the website. Just check our YouTube channel as far as um, future live broadcasts are concerned. But until then, that's me, Conrad, signing off. Cheers. Bye-bye.